Thank you so much, everyone. So let's begin. Our first session is called Health and Wellbeing in the Hospitality Sector. This is about the redefinition of hygiene and well-being. Before we start, let me try to explain you why this talk centers around the hospitality sector in particular. As everybody is aware, the COVID-19 pandemic has highly affected the hospitality sector, considering the travel restrictions, the measures that were imposed in many countries around the world. But the sector remains resilient in the face of these new challenges and is working on ways to adapt to the changes which were brought by the pandemic. It is a must for hotels to adapt, seeing that people are eager to be able to travel again. But since their needs have been impacted by the pandemic as now more than ever, they are looking for spaces that they trust are maintaining the best hygiene standards. Our guests today will be sharing their input on how the hospitality sector can take on these challenges from a design, commercial, and trend perspective. I would like to start with my first question. And my first question is for you, Renu. Referring to this redefinition that we are experiencing, what implication do these developments have on how the hospitality sector is adapting to meet these new standards of hygiene? Thank you for the question, Yalis, and good afternoon, everyone who's on the call. I think in unprecedented times like these, um, all of us probably as consumers, partners, uh, corporates, and in individual professions are actually looking at something called safety and normalcy, right? That's the spirit that we want to give to each other as family, as consumers, and also as responsible brands. I think growers is being a pioneer in this for very long. We have been working on our touchless range, infrared range for, for decades. And this pandemic has only come to press the point that we need to provide our consumers and also all of you as architects and designers to be able to have some solutions for hospitality sector and otherwise as well to make sure that our consumers are safe. A lot of products that you're seeing on the screen are, are touchless, uh, empowered by infrared technologies. And we have executed many projects in the region which have had this for, I think they're more than, uh, some of these projects are at least a decade old. And some recent ones that we did, like Address Fountain View, Downtown, some in Sharjah, even Fairmount Abu Dhabi, they're all with touchless uh, technology in public areas at least, and in some in even rooms, depending upon what our partners thought was appropriate. So when we are talking about this, we are saying that as brand, we are obviously investing in reasonable uh, technologies, but also our customers and you as our partners in designers and you know, architects, planners, installers, everywhere in the world also are promoting this because all of you believe in this cause and believe that health and safety is of prime importance. The pandemic and all of us actually being at home for a larger time of the last year has also resulted in whenever we wanted to step out as consumers, also consider safety as a very important part. There was a time that you would go for a staycation, which is very popular in UAE, right? Or a a vacation and think about, okay, what luxury does the hotel have? I mean, okay, the gym, the spa, the pool and everything. But now, and what kind of restaurants? Maybe five, right? Different cuisines and all the, all the luxury that UAE comes with. But now what are we considering? Okay, they have restaurants. How much is the social distance? Are they maintaining cleanliness, hygiene enough in the kitchens? Can I actually go and use the spa? Because there will be many people. Is the equipment in gym, you know, cleaned enough? So I guess all of us as even consumers and customers are thinking that way, right? So which, which really puts a lot of responsibility on brands and our partners, all of you, and also the hospitality sector in general, to make sure that we are doing what is right to do for the larger safety of the world. So that's how I think the needle has shifted, Elise. And that's what I believe, you know, will we'll continue for, for uh, some time as Vaccination might have come in, but we will take time to get vaccinated. Yes. Uh, so Patrick, uh, what are some growers designs that can bring change to the hotel experience? 
be it in, in the rooms or public spaces, such as restaurants or public restrooms, restrooms, please kindly, can you explain it us in detail? Yes, uh, yes, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for, I think, for putting together the, the, the event here. So just like a, such an honor to join as well. Uh, from my side here, representing the, the Lixio and the Grill brand. Uh, I think building up a little bit on, uh, on what Renu said, so I think it's very, very important to say, I think that the role that actually kind of uh, our design team and uh, the, the grew uh, also uh, brings together, together with like the designers, the planners and the architects and everybody, you know, like uh, the way that we try to, I think, support the community also from each category or each kind of a kind of hotel. So we try to bring up the, the right product with the high, highest level of standards in terms of technology. And, uh, and building up, I think Rena mentioned something very important. It's about uh, the, the, the situation that we have right now. So no one really feels comfortable about touching any surface at all, any sink or, or any faucet, especially in, a, in, in public spaces or, uh, uh, and actually kind of a, it, it comes to, to, to private as well, but the public spaces, uh, definitely the architectural concepts, uh, it needs to be somehow rethought. It is going through definitely a transformation, which means the way that we are going to interact with the products and also with the layouts and spaces, as Reno mentioned regarding spas and regarding public areas, has to be adapted to meet first of all i think new hygiene demands also and i think also to to support uh the health and well-being of each of the users as well and i think definitely this 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 responsibility that we have from uh in supporting the architects and designers community to tackle these challenges by developing this uh this the solutions right that we need to improve uh, not only hygiene, but also uh, I think consumers' lives, and this is kind of a jump into the proposal that we have to 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 make like a, again a product that is going to be meaningful. For it. So developing this touchless products to to improve the hygiene is definitely not a not a new topic, and I think uh, the way that we we play around with uh, in the bathroom, right, uh, when it comes to the touchless uh, products, or the way that we design them, so like uh, when you can place, for example, your hands on under the spout or in, in, in front of the sensor. So it makes not only a very uh, hygienic way of interaction into it, but also it's actually a sustainable, from the sustainable point of view is very important as well, because you can make sure that's gonna shut on and off the valve uh, during the utilization of the product. So we consider everything like how the consumer is gonna, is gonna uh, work with this as an example, for example, kids, having kids at home, normally they, they even leave the, sometimes the lever open for brushing the teeth and stuff. With a, with a touchless faucet, sometimes it even supports them to an educational side that cuts off the valve. So it's an utilization that we found out in researches that actually kind of is very good as well uh, from this point. Uh, but not only, uh, for example, the, the bathroom, for example, if we bring these technologies to kitchen, as an example, uh, this is something that we have uh, with our smart control kitchen. That is an amazing new product that we just launched because kitchen is also one of the places that we either have your hands busy uh, with either pots and things, but sometimes if you're opening a dough or utilizing or chopping boards and stuff, sometimes you don't want to uh, take that directly with your hands because you don't want to, uh, you know, make a mess and also you try to avoid a cross contamination if you're sharing the kitchen with anybody. So this is a great point with our smart control where we have a on and off push button uh, that dissociates from uh, the temperature control. So we managed to play around with these two things to make sure that is the best way for you to operate uh, the faucet with either uh, your elbow and making things, I would say kind of a, a super quick for you to, to utilize the product. Also, uh, if we just kind of making a hook into, into the technology, so the way that we think in terms of technology, if you bring that into a different uh, typology of products, getting back to the bathroom, that's about our, 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 our shower, shower toilets, as an example, our, our, new, uh, our new sensory arena, as an example of hygiene. So we believe that the technology, it's, uh, it's uh, an enabler 
of making something or building something that's relevant for the consumers. And I think when it comes to this particular product over here, uh, we have also achieved a good level of, uh, of technology that helps the consumer to make their lives kind of easy in terms of hygiene as well. We have, you don't want to touch the lid into, into, into your toilet, right? So that's why the Sensorina, you have like this open and closes automatically as you get this kind of a proximity uh, sensor to it you avoid touching all the things so it's a super product if you think about enhancing your level of, uh, of, of hygiene as well and on top we have so many other features as well such as like uh, one that we I particularly love that's the aqua ceramic that makes uh, also, uh, the glazing that we utilize that avoid to get the surfaces that are going to stick into it. And uh, again, from the design point, point of view, I could kind of spend quite a lot of time talking about this. But my main message is uh, this product is kind of a built based on consumers or based into needs and not only technology for the technology's sake. Yes, very interesting uh, products, especially the kitchen ones. I think they are very interesting for all the ladies, especially. So, Catherine, referring to these developments mentioned by Renu and Patrick, what kind of great social developments do you see? Catherine, I, I think you are mute. You are, uh, I think you are mute. Good afternoon, everyone from Dubai. Um, just to follow on from what Patrick was saying, I really think that hygiene is most definitely the buzzword and at the heart of health, um, health and well-being um, trend at the moment. Consumers really want to take control and to manage their lives with intelligent solutions to take good care of their health and well-being. And they also want more from their bathroom and kitchen spaces. Expectations are high as everyone is just so eager to, to remain as clean and pure as possible. Um, as a deliberate contrast to the hectic world, the bathroom has become an oasis of well-being a personal retreat for body and soul and where so many of us want to escape to in these um, COVID days. This also changes the demands placed on products. For example, a shower should offer a, a personal showering experience um, while also saving water. Um, you know, the, the concept of saving and pleasure is, is very much entwined. Um, these days, everybody seems to, to strive to be a designer, and in, in many ways they can be. They can design their own spaces. Um, the trend towards customization, the ability to create your own personal look and feel can be applied to practically everything nowadays, um, from the color of your faucet to the case of your mobile phone. People really want to make their mark and to put their personal touch on just about everything they own. And that is especially so when we look at their um, kitchen and bathroom spaces, which are sort of more intimate spaces. Um, people want to feel unique, um, to be individual and, and to be noticed as they strive to simultaneously create smarter and cleaner um, homes and offices. Fortunately, um, I think uh, manufacturers have, have zoomed in on that. And whether it be a kitchen cupboard, a manufacturer of kitchen cupboard doors, faucets, or even a car, manufacturers provide easy to use online configurators that allow consumers to create the look and feel that they want. Um, they can sort of have a trial and error. But even those who just want to update their bathroom or kitchens with a few stylish accessories can do so to make them more hygienic. Yes. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to thank all of my guests for this interesting first session. And uh, we can go for a two minute or one minute break uh, with a video magic. We are with you, but please everyone stay tuned for the second session because we have more interesting stuff coming.
Ajit, I think some people couldn't hear the video. Uh, if you want, you can play it again. You can replay it. Yes, we are back for the second session, and our second session is called the effect of urbanization on health and well-being. For the ones who might be joining a little late, I have Renu Misra, Patrick Speck, and Catherine Belvin today with me, and we are having a very informative digital dialogue. The focus of the second session will be on how global trends of urbanization is creating shifts in consumer behavior. We believe that consumers are fundamentally changing how they define and use their living spaces. Grohe has identified five pieces, which we may also call five micro trends. I will quickly try to explain what are these five micro trends before we start. Firstly, we know that most people nowadays, they move into the cities and because of this movement, the living space becomes much more limited and smaller. Consumers are, uh, are creating new living spaces that blend and redefine the kitchen and the living room or the, the bathroom and the bedroom. So we can say that the borders are kind of dissolving. These rooms are not only functional rooms anymore, but uh, the, the kitchen and bathroom products become also like furnishing items. Secondly, the consumers have risen from passive consumption to becoming creators and taking control over the creation of their living spaces. The next one is that they have become creators themselves in seeking simplicity. So uh, they are customizing their living spaces to reflect also their personal taste. Uh, the fourth one is that today, maybe as a reason of all these changes that I've listed, the consumers are inclined to choose integrated solutions over single products. And the last one is that consumers are also much more demanding for intelligent solutions to take care of their health and well-being. Now they have much higher expectations towards kitchen and bathroom than before. And you may ask why higher expectations? Because the bathroom has become the oasis of well-being, while the kitchens, they became the heart of the home. So our guests will be sharing their input on, on how urbanization is influencing the way consumers are redefining their living spaces and also how that is affecting their health and well-being. My first question comes for you, Renu. How do you think the urbanization and the five micro trends that I've just explained are affecting the product demand in the UAE and Middle East? And also, do you think the people are looking to recreate their spaces to enhance the quality of their health and well being? I think the health consciousness overall has increased, right? I mean, we have. We are work, we are probably operating in an environment where there is, you know, all kinds of challenges in scarcity of resources, pollution, the lifestyle has become really difficult. People are traveling, were traveling at least before COVID, all across the globe, so not getting enough sleep. So I guess there are a lot of there are a lot of lifestyle changes with more and more young working couples experienced. And if any of us have been to cities or lived in cities like 
New York or Singapore or Hong Kong. I mean, then we know what scarcity of space really means, right? I mean, that's that's when you you want to make your house a home and which reflects your personality and your taste for sure. So, you know, some of the trends are um, very common when we say that uh, new living spaces and we are saying that, you know, the a lot of it has become like a new culture, right? Uh, the boundaries are fluid. Um, people are taking bath and bedroom as just one space. And, and this trend has been something which Groha has observed for, for very long. And a lot of our product ranges actually cater to that. The whole color collection, even having uh, concealed tanks with flush plates, which are color coordinated, actually tell us that we want to create a space where you know it's seamless and it it's actually not only aesthetic, functional, but also it blends beautifully into the taste of the consumer, right? So that's that's some for sure we're seeing as as a trend. We also see that the kitchen and the living spaces have blended, and uh, we have grow her blue, grow her red, uh, which which. Uh, which is the hot water and also the cold and the bubbly water that we have right straight from the tap. I mean, that's that's a lifestyle product. I mean, you want to entertain your family, friends into your living spaces. And also all of you enjoy, you know, tossing a quick meal or a quick bite because everybody's come from work, everybody's hungry, but you don't want, you know, to be just cooking in the kitchen and miss out on the conversation. And I would say that's gender neutral, really. So men and women should be equally excited about it, right? So I would say that, you know, having your kitchen and your um, living spaces blended is also another culture. So I think consumers are not only becoming creators, but they're also simplicity seekers. So it's both trends pretty much amalgamating in one. First is that more and more consumers know what they want. It's reflecting in their taste and, and companies like Groher, which are pioneer in innovation technology, are providing them those choices. So we have concealed systems uh, for our bathrooms where you just put it behind the wall and forget it. And every two, three years, if you want to renovate the change, the look of the house, you just change your upper parts. So we are facilitating all that for our consumers. We're making sure that their kitchen has lifestyle products. I mean, we, we heard about smart control from Patrick. It's, it's, it's the most loved product pretty much in the, uh, in the industry and uh, specifically in our region. And when, when people come back and tell me, oh, you know what, Middle East does not have people cooking and you, know, you always have maids to support, that's not true. Actually, we, most people talk about two kitchens, you know, one, one which is like the, the heavy cooking or which you leave your support staff to do, but a lot of other spaces where you want to toss that meal, open a bottle of wine, probably you know, share something with your friends. So I guess you are, we are as a brand catering to all of these uh, needs and demands of the consumers across the world. And that's where the size of the house doesn't matter. It's about the consumer interest and how simple, how, how much he or she is a simplicity seeker or, or a very big design enthusiast. So there is nothing called loud or simple. It's about personal taste. And I think brands like us are uh, reading these trends. We are working on these trends and we make sure that we launch products which are not only high on technology and quality, but also you know, catering to their aesthetic sense. That's what I can say. Um, and I'm sure Patrick will have more, more and more to add on. Yes, so I turn to Patrick. Patrick, how yeah. can growing designs and innovations help consumers in redefining their living spaces? And also, what are some products that you think are a must to create a good health and well-being environment for consumers? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, building building uh, once more, Reno. I think you 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 just kind of made a made a, a, a speech in the end that kind of a resumes a lot of or, or or kind of a, I think represents a lot of what we've been witnessing in the in both let's say bathroom and also on the kitchen, especially when you're talking about is like a, this uh, this almost this crossover between the simplicity seekers and the new living spaces is almost like a and almost more in the in the design uh, in the design 
world or leading a design team and we have definitely to be like sponges absorbing all this uh let's say uh, insights or kind of a messages or like signals that are coming from our society and from our 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 consumers to understand so where and how can we get this learnings right i can go a bit more into into depth in uh in, in this particular topic but uh, i think this this redefinition of a uh, of the spaces, as uh, Rainer said, that no matter what, if your 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 place is big, if your place is small, it's about optimization of uh, if you if you are in a in a in a in a smaller space, it's about the optimization of functions. It is the op- optimization uh, of how can you you actually kind of a do more with less or in some cases where uh, when you have like a much bigger space is about like a, also maximizing the experience that we have right as Rena just uh, mentioned something regarding regarding the kitchen so when definitely comes to to bedroom and bathroom i think this uh, this this border is kind of a being dissolved as as we discussed in the past uh, follows pretty much the same route as kitchen dining room and living room had happened maybe 10, 15, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, when, when something like that happens, what happens? Your, your products are much more exposed, right? Because in the past, a bathroom or a kitchen, they were very functional spaces. You used to kind of hide everything. Okay, this is the place. If it's a mess, I close the door and I leave, right? But uh, in the moment that from a functional space, it becomes a living space, they actually expect more. Everyone expects more. So this product needs to perform into a certain kind of level. But also the reflection of what you create there, it's going to be a representation of yourself, of our, is a self-expression. As Reno mentioned, so everyone travels, everyone sees things and stuff. So, and, uh, and I think this is what happened for us at Growers. So we tried sometimes to, in the design teams, we tried to, okay, how can you make life of the consumers easier in a, in a, kind, of a, in a kind of concept? So uh, one thing that we had in mind was about creating what we call like a perfect match, right? So where we try to offer uh, these uh, product combinations that are, are, are kind of, we're giving them guides that if from the style wise, right? The style base, we we definitely kind of a, uh, can kind of a, giving them some support, but also creating what we call like a, a comprehensive kind of a range of products that you know from every single touch point in a bathroom, uh, you can actually find something. We you were actually kind of seeing something that regarding our 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 color collections, uh, uh, but also if you ever thought about, uh, for example, look for a, a, a wash basing as an example, right? So you know that uh, when you're looking for a wash basing, the, 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 for example, the selection is huge, right? Sometimes people even get overwhelmed or well, what kind of style of wash basing should I match with this product? So the perfect match at Groa also goes into that level, not only on an aesthetic side, but also into a side that I would say in the function. Right, because sometimes you know, well, uh, is this going to splash? No, no. If you, you need to use the right typology of product with the right typology of basing. So with Grow a Perfect Match, we actually managed to tackle and try to what to do: give architects and designers the freedom to plan the bath the bathroom through this uh, uh, coordinated design with the right solutions that are definitely uh, going to match uh, with the perfect accessories. And I think what you're seeing here in the screen with, uh, with, definitely with, uh, with the essence, uh, I think, uh, tells uh, a lot about that. So you have like a, a beautiful uh, a color coordination, you have the beautiful style coordination, and you have this kind of a right match between typology of product and typology uh, of ceramic and type- typology of fossils. And our color collections uh, are definitely help a lot the consumers to express uh, their, 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 like to say, like their own styles through, uh, I would say, kind of a high end quality uh, of finish that also is going to, to definitely fulfill the needs. But from, from the design statement is, 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 this is pretty much where we bring the team uh, to understand all that, uh, what has been said before, uh, it's kind of understanding consumers, try to make sure that what we are going to put there on the market is going to have a relevance, having this relevance and having this meaning that we can, through the design, apply our, let's say, our unique grower design language into these products that are going to reflect our brand values in the end. 
Yes. So, Catherine, then uh, how, how do you see the growing microtrends coming to life from a consumer's perspective? Yes, yeah, let's say, I mean, I, I believe that we've all sort of rediscovered our homes and we've become very house proud. We're very, we're very conscious of how we design our homes and, and how, we, how we maintain them. Um, I think that also due to spending so much time at home and the combination of the rise of social media, people are really, they're sharing their spaces and they want to make them as, as beautiful as possible to put them on their social media feeds. And they want to make the best impression, which in many ways is a great for, for companies like yourselves, like Grohe, who can, who find their faucets and their showers being splashed all over um, Instagram. Um, people are just so involved in their homes at the moment. I think they, they're just totally obsessed with, with getting that right look and feel and also to make sure that the, their homes and their spaces are, are hygienic. I think this is also linked in many ways to, to the adaptation of a lot of um, home automatum um, systems as well, there's a lot of technology coming into the home and people can, um, you know, have a much uh, more relaxed lifestyle by, by relying on, um, on, on technology. Um, I think Grohe, for example, has identified this trend about being smart and intelligent life management. Um, and one of the technologies that I personally have at home is, is the Grohe Sense Guard, um, which allows me to, to keep an eye on any um, water leaks that I, that I may have. Um, and so we have installed on both the cold and the hot pipes, um, the, the Grohe gadget that will, you know, tell me if there is um, a water leakage, I'll get a message on my, on my phone um, through the Grohe Sense app. And I think products like that are what consumers really want. They want to know that, that everything in their life is, is being managed and managed smartly and intelligently um, so that they have you know, the, the minimum loss of, of water and, and, and valuable resources, I think. Um, I think also the, the global wellness um, industry is just growing in, in leaps and bounds. Um, and I, I read recently that the, um, it was a report from the Global Wellness Institute that this sector is actually now worth 4.5 trillion US dollars. Um, and it, it sort of links into everything. It's, you know, whether you're using telemedicine or participating on online workout programs, the industry, that industry is at the core of the modern lifestyle and is expected to continue growing um, as we are continue to be more and more um, focused and obsessed with hygiene and, and wellness. Um, I think we can also mention that um, home bathing spaces have become really the, the escape havens for purification and relaxation. They're the ultimate hideaway private refuge space during this time. Um, and I think in this region, um, particularly in the past, we spent a lot of time in hotels and at resorts, um, at, at sports clubs. However, now with COVID, people want to recreate that home spa experience at home to create intimate spaces where they control the hygiene, where they can relax and they can pamper themselves in the security of their own home. Yelit? Yes, thank you, Catherine. So we reached to the end of the second session uh, we again have a very small video, but then after we have the third and final session, so please stay tuned.
Yes, I received some comments that there is no uh, sound for the video, but I believe this video doesn't have any sound. It was just a quick break uh, for some refreshing uh, quick time. So the, the name of the third session is sustainability and creating better homes for everyone everywhere in the MENA region. This session is about the role of sustainability in creating the products of the future. I would like to start explaining you the focus of uh, the session. We will discuss a little bit about the sustainability and about how Grohe is working towards creating better homes. So I need to say that besides quality technology and design, sustainability is one of the four Grohe brand values and it is deeply anchored in brand strategy. As per the principles and guidelines for sustainability, Grohe has committed itself to continuously improving all the products, processes, and services in terms of protecting the environment and conserving resources. Since then, Grohe has set new industry standards, applying its 360-degree sustainability approach. These new standards are allowing Grohe to create better homes for everyone everywhere, and our guests will give us more insights on how this is being done. Renu, my question for you. How is Grohe contributing to the promotion of sustainability and the preservation of water in a region like Middle East, where the water is a very limited resource? I think that you're right. I mean, water is a scarce resource across the world, but I think MENA as a region has the highest consumption as well. So I would say when it has highest consumption with the population that we have, then there is a lot of wastage, right? So there is something which we as consumers uh, have to be very conscious about. Obviously, we as a brand uh, want to support the whole initiative and we want to pass that message for future generation. So there are a lot of initiatives that we took over regionally uh, as Middle East, uh, North and West Africa region, uh, which is what, uh, you know, Grow Amina, I would say. And essentially, a lot of them are actually in Middle East. We we extended a program called Green Mosque way back in 2009. It actually started from the point where we said that, you know, where is, a, it's a ritual, right? So we, we need to go, we need to make sure that there is a ritual that we follow. It's important. And, but what can we do differently to make sure that the water consumed is less? So we went ahead and in a few mosques, we changed the taps to self-closing taps. And like Patrick mentioned earlier, right? What does a touchless faucet do? It gets a discipline, right? The children are brushing and then the tap stops and then they realize that, okay, I didn't need it. You know, it was going on for um, uh, unused. And also in today's time, you actually want more and more things which are contactless, right? So when we did way back in 2009, we didn't stop at just changing the faucets to self-closing. We said we will go back and measure the water consumption. And when we had the bills records for these uh, mosques that we change in, we saw 30% less consumption. Now that's something which is encouraging. Uh, we went on to extend that to many countries. So we did this in UAE, we did this in Saudi, in Egypt, in Turkey, and uh, we will keep extending it. The second initiative, which was like a phase two of green mosque was turn water into food. So we said, okay, what can we do to community, give back to community as a brand, which is a water brand and everybody's perception about industry, which is in water or let's say even beverages, right? Is we consume a lot of water, right? That's the impression. So we said, okay, we have to do a bit beyond than what we are doing today, right? So there are many initiatives at the manufacturing level that Grow Hard does, but then as, as a marketing uh, entity, what do we do differently in the region? we started donating for every 10 liters of water that we saved because we had changed it into a self-closing tap or any other initiative. We said we will do donate one food bag to the family. And we did this in the holy month of Ramadan. The idea of doing this was also giving back to society in a different way. And that's something which we took over in 2015. In this year, in 2021, we are extending it further to going uh, to schools in UAE with the same initiative of making sure that we have uh, saving water as, as an initiative, self-closing taps, and also educating children through the books that we have on water enjoyment to, for them to understand what does water conservation mean. 
and if we don't start that early i don't think we develop those habits right it, and we always say that um beyond teaching there is practice right so we have to make sure that all of us as adults do that role modeling for our kids but then we go back to school so that and we and we saw some uh, real you know amusing reactions from when we did this in cyprus in pakistan earlier when children would come back home to their parents and say this is not correct to do you should close the tap because you are brushing or you are shaving and I, and we we heard those stories and we said yeah th- this makes right so it's not only you role modeling for your kids your kids doing it for you and then that's where you start from the school and all of these initiatives i mean just being humble about it but then won us a lot of awards as well it was one of the best campaigns in middle east in the year 2014 and it was a sabar award we also were ra- ranked as a fourth best pr campaign for this decade and i think while we did not do this for awards it in the end it's recognition of what the brand can do so as a responsible brand we should take the sustainability agenda forward and that's what we are living up to the reputation of being an industry leader and i'm really proud of that Yes, yes, really uh, very nice initiatives. I felt very emotional while listening to you, Reno. Uh, so, Patrick, how how are Grow His Designs uh, contributing to the promotion of a sustainable lifestyle? And what are some of the products that create better home for everyone everywhere? Absolutely. So, yeah. First, I felt I felt the same. Uh, it is uh, like uh, I would say the passion uh, that Renu had in her speech when talking about this, and 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 this just shows the commitment of of the company, right? It's uh, it's uh, like a uh, sustainability is embedded in the DNA of like not only the company, but it cascades down to all the leaders and all to the all employees uh, and all the all the partner the partners in this in this company. And by the way, I I, I joined Grow uh, like 16 years ago, right? And uh, and at that time it was about 15 years ago. It's it like a and uh, and sustainability was already there, right? It means that something that's been evolving. So like uh, and I must say I'm I witnessed like the this evolution there, right? Uh, on what happened Uh, uh, before and what is happening right now and then from the company perspective and the, from the company point of view we definitely have already kind of established some of these these programs and uh, that uh, I think like it's like a uh, each region has like sometimes even their own initiative but again this is all uh, i would say kind of a backed by i would say that the top management the senior management the company has all this and uh, and when it definitely comes to to design so the way that we communicate that together with the team we have to make them understand that uh, sustainability is an integral part of it if you take like for example my generation was kind of the generation that was kind of getting to the shift but i have loads of young designers that are coming to our team right now with loads of fresh ideas and these guys that have one thing in their head that's a lot about purpose as well so they have this and they are the first ones to question before we start ideating or doing anything into the design we are still in the very early stages on the design process uh, these guys are actually instigating oh but what about the mix of materials that we are utilizing that it's like a good thing to do so how can we maybe make the product shape a bit compact that we can uh, reduce the package size right that we can you know reducing the package size we can kind of ship more in making the transportation more efficient and consequently we're going to generate less uh, residue or like kind of a less leftovers by the way we saw during pandemic how packaging is a very important uh, uh, component because i'm receiving loads of deliveries of food or like uh, goods by uh, let's say by amazon or by any other uh, courier that you have and you see the amount sometimes you're transporting air you have huge packages with a little thing like that we have loads of these initiatives including one that's taking completely disposable plastic bags in size of our package so we are reducing a lot into it and definitely as designers we have to understand all Oh, oh, and how can we we support to make it happen? Uh, when it comes also to the product creation, we have for me one of the best examples uh, that we did recently is our. 3D printed faucet uh, technology. So when you talk about 3D printed faucet, you know, it, it means it might look like a very sci-fi, but no, no, we are actually kind of utilizing, try to understand how we can use this. 
I think uh, what we did with our portfolio of uh, 3D printed forces, we took like uh, two existing products, uh, typologies that was Atri and Allure Brilliant. And, uh, and with this, uh, I would say kind of a new way of uh, manufacturing, we managed to use 55% less material when you compare the Allure Brilliant full brass and then when you compare it with a 3D printed faucet. So it's it's just an amazing territory that we as designers, we are kind of a very keen and very, I would say, uh, uh, curious to explore on what, where and what are the boundaries of this uh, particular project and particular process, right? So we are kind of a, we are into this journey and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to kind of a, to be pushing this together with the team. Also, uh, when it comes to uh, what we say, uh, we have like a, one word that we call the eco joy, right? Is like the, this kind of a, the ecological enjoyment of water is that uh, some of our products and we have our showers sometimes and some of our faucets as an example, we have like a, a created together with the, uh, the R&D team, like a, what we call this flow restrictor, right? That they reduce, for example, water consumption from, you know, 10 liters per minute to, you know, over five liters per minute. It's just an example because one thing when it comes to products, uh, and again, uh, listening and talking to, to, to architects, to planners and to designers, uh, we cannot compromise performance. So, right, so we expect it has to kind of uh, work as good as if it would have a flow. So we push the R&D and together we definitely can, uh, can bring some of these solutions uh, that are going to, I would say kind of a support the consumer's lives. And I wanted to end my, 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 uh, my answer here with one other product that I'm very proud of. Uh, and it was there on the beginning of that, that was our Grow Blue our glow, uh, grow a blue water system. So this is like, uh, I think one of the products that uh, uh, we managed to give to consumers into the, into the hands, uh, the, pretty much the choice of having like a still uh, sparkling water, you know, to have like a chilled water uh, just in kind of a, into the, into the hands in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the convenience of the, the kitchen counter, which kind of a pretty much builds up on what Reno was saying in the kitchen, right? In your kitchen environment and the tools that we are providing to consumers. So we're really proud of that, that we are offering, I would say, an amazing system uh, in, in, in several kind of uh, configurations, but also you reduce the consumption of plastic water bottles. So we are making sure that you were not kind of a getting back home with tons of plastic. And at the end of the day, uh, this plastics might end up either pollution, uh, polluting our oceans or might end up into a landfill. So uh, again, this is one of our initiatives that I'm pretty proud of it. Yes, everybody was very excited to hear a little bit about Grohe Blue, so thank you for mentioning that as well. So, Catherine, uh, do you consider sustainability to be a factor uh, that is influencing the consumer behavior and lifestyle in the MENA region? Oh, absolutely. Um, adding on to what Reno and Patrick have said uh, earlier, um, I firmly believe that the region and the UAE in particular has embraced the sustainability movement despite the fact that we still have a very high um, footprint, um, but we are very open and looking forward to, to welcoming and seeing new products on the market that will help people become more sustainable um, and to, for their own well-being and also to help save the planet. Um, just going back on what Patrick was saying, um, we've actually in the UAE taken the 3D sort of printing revolution a step further and we've already printed an office building and also um, a building, I believe, for the, uh, the water and electricity department. So the, the 3D revolution is really um, kicking in here and, and it's, it's, a, it's a way of building that we, we really want to, to promote and, and to um, encourage, encourage. I think it always people in, in Dubai, in the UAE are, are looking at minimizing their carbon footprint because we realize we can't sustain the, the way that we have been living. Um, so whether it's when we're buying the shower or, or deciding where to live, people are looking at what is a sustainable option. 
Um, and people, you know, often are looking at, at, at residing in complete custom designed residential communities, which are total sort of eco um, complexes, um, which is a good move. Um, also, I'm just um, referring back to, to what Patrick was saying. Um, here in Dubai, it's been some time now that Dubai's hotels actually banned the use of plastic water bottles. And instead, they are offering purified water to guests using products like Grow Hey Blue. Um, these products, you know, allow, allow you to, to create um, pure, clean water using only a fraction of, of the amount of, of energy um, that it would normally take to, to, to create a bottle of water. Um, and they are served also in glass bottles. <laughs> um, I think that the, the, the demand here in the Emirates for sustainable products continues to, to increase. And I think especially so when we, when we look at water, which is one of the, the, the most precious resources in, in the region and, and something that we really need to look at using less, whether it's when we're watering our garden, whether when we're cooking, um, bathing, whatever we're doing. It, it's really um, something that is becoming more and more at the forefront of our thoughts. Um, another example where the UAE is sort of going forward with the sustainability movement is, is just the fact that we have um, in Abu Dhabi, we have the IRENA, which is the UN's International Renewal Energy Agency. Um, and its uh, global headquarter is in, is in Abu Dhabi as part of the Mazdar city, which is a unique development designed to generate the lowest carbon um, emissions. Again, um, back in Dubai, um, the Dubai Water and Electricity Department have, um, have built the Mohammed bin Rashid, bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park, which is a mammoth 77 square kilometer solar park that is one of the largest single site photovoltaic um, parks in the world. Um, you know, we have a lot of initiatives here and, and the, the environment is very much at the forefront. Just one last point, I'd just like to mention that as part of Dubai's clean energy strategy for 2050, um, it aims to provide 25% of its energy needs from solar sources by 2030 and to have one of the smallest carbon footprints in the world by 2050. Um, here in Dubai, we're always ambitious, so fingers and toes crossed that uh, we're able to do that. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, so we are just on time. This is great. I think now we are ready to move on to the Q&A session. We still have some time. Uh, so please feel free to drop your questions. Uh, I will also appreciate if you can mention who the question is addressed to, so it will be easier for me. And I will also quickly check the questions that we have received so far. Um, there is a question, and I think this is for you, Patrick. Uh, what is the most creative model designed in Rohe until now? So the sorry, say it again. Yeah, so, so what is the most creative? What? Uh, yes. What is the, the most creative model designed? Ah, okay. So okay. Asking, probably, yes. Ooh, that's a very open question. So like, yes, uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> I'm also curious. <laughs> that's a very open question. So like, uh, for someone like me that likes to talk, I could kind of spend some time doing this, but. Uh, I must say that again, the, the again the creative thinking needs to be definitely. Uh, it's like as I said, like it's embedded in the in the way we do. We can be creative in, in, in every single like. Sometimes the more restrictions and more boundaries you have, more creative you need to be, kind of to find a way to work around, and at the same time providing uh, providing kind of a I would say kind of a solutions that are that are definitely going to 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 let's say kind of to fulfill fill something but uh, if i have to pick up like one product uh let's think about i, I think we could uh, get also to to our i think a started as a as one single product that was our smart control for shower 
and uh, I can talk about that because I was involved on a, on a, on the on the very beginning. Uh, was the first actually product that we we had the chance to uh, work in collaboration with our Lixil uh, at that time. That uh, that we found out a technology that could have a relevance, and then we worked together uh, in this technology. Uh, with, because at that time we had a demand but we did not have the technology. And when that happened, we could bring two things together. As I, as I told you in the beginning, uh, uh, the technology has to be an enabler of, of something that has a meaning for consumers or for the company. Otherwise, it just becomes kind of a, a not relevant for it. And then for smart control, we managed to, I, I think, change the the way that people control, for example, water in the shower at that time, uh, where you could have a direct, access to the water source you wanted uh you could through uh like uh, just one push and also one turn you could kind of uh, regulate the flow directly and and that product started as an exposed shower mixer and then ended up kind of a getting into a concealed and that kind of a in the end of the day, evolved in a way that it became almost like a power brand itself, right? As we could uh, bring a similar situation to the kitchen, as I explained to you guys today. And at that time when we did it, that uh, I don't remember the year exactly, but uh, if you pop, you're going to see a little green ring inside. And our intention with that was to give the consumers the freedom. If you want the, let's say, the full power of water, like uh, you can kind of a turn right, right? You're going to have a flow. But that green is to rem remind you, pause your shower. You know, you can switch off or, or kind of, a, you, you know, switch the water source or you can reduce the flow. It's almost like giving them the consciousness or trying to give that the, uh, the sort of education that we wanted with the product. So I think it was a product very successful. We managed to kind of spread that out not from one category, but also, as we said now, bring that into a kitchen where it also uh, proved its relevance. Okay. Uh, another question. I think this is a good question for you, Reni, because it's about the marketing and sales. Uh, they're asking, what are your expectations of continued demand of, for touchless products after COVID-19? Do the strategies uh, for manufacturing and marketing these products depend on the current market need affected by COVID-19? Or are you looking at new touchless products to deepen their presence in the markets after COVID-19? Maybe I can both renew your opinion and also Patrick's opinion about this one. Yeah. Okay, so I think for, for touchless products, they're here to stay. I mean, it's, it's like I said, They've always been there. I guess it was more necessitated by the current pandemic and people saw value in that. But then from a sustainability agenda, and it's been really long there. We are expanding it to many more ranges and we expect that the trend will continue because more and more public areas, hospitals, malls, commercial complexes, entertainment areas, even a lot of homes where you entertain a lot of people and you want to put this in your guest room or powder room is also going on as a trend. So as a brand, which recognizes and pioneers in, uh, in studying the trends and designing products to us uh, to, for consumers, have a wide range and we can adapt that technology. So I see that trend for sure uh, for a very long time. And I, I guess uh, Patrick has many more things to add. Yeah, Renu. So for me, it's uh, I think you you, you pointed out uh, the it was I think linking to what we discussed on the I think on the beginning of a part of our of our of our discussion. I think the pandemic, or or any pandemic, or sometimes any 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 trend that sometimes you have the tipping point, right? Is like a things are, are are kind of a evolving. It has a very strong foundation. There's a point that is like a it gets a sort of epiphany, and 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 I think uh, with with COVID. Uh, and uh, and I think it just kind of came out and, and became more more. Uh, it's actually became seen by the bigger picture of a uh, let's say wider range of consumers because I think the touchless portfolio, as you said, it's been there. 
it's been there forever for 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 a long time but the use of that was like a, almost like end consumers or even i would say even architects and designers they would not consider putting or specifying those products in a residential right uh, aspect because now that's really kind of a uh, is really relevant just for one typology because of public spaces and the xyz but i think it's actually being proved that it can actually be utilized into 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 a, into a residential with like a family and stuff because you know for the reasons as i said there's the water saving feature as well is not only uh, the question of touchless uh, being on that but also the consequence of having that into uh, even like into a kitchen product or as i said like in a bathroom situation with the shower toilets and all the kind of stuff so it, it it's definitely there so the need is 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 existing right and i think um, we're definitely from a from a product creation perspective, uh, considering that much more into it now, yeah. As before, it was a that was only a a a a, a public space uh, sort of way of doing this. But now, now, now it's definitely being 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 considered to 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 kind of keep moving further and evolving that sort of technology or typology of product. Yes, uh, Patrick, there is one more question, and this is about the, the digitalization around the world. Mm -hmm. Since the world is going on a very fast mm -hmm. digitalization trend, uh, they're asking how does Grohe design team tackle with this, and uh, are we going to see more digitally connected devices from Grohe in the future? Mm -hmm. I think well, 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 well said. That I think it's uh, we are definitely in a in a journey into into finding out, uh, and I, I always emphasize that you know if it's the, whatever technology improvement that happens, or uh, we need to understand. So what is going to be the relevance into our uh, our utilization? So you need to understand. So what is this relevant for that particular area or for another? So it's not just the fact that we need to add something let's say that's digital just for the sake of it. We will never do this, right? So we're, ne we're always going to see. So what is the main reason? Uh, what is the, the, the actual meaning of, of making it? And I think uh, the applications, or let's talk about the user experience, user interface design, uh, that we have that capability in-house. Uh, I think we did something that was kind of a very positive when you showed that our, our water management systems, like with the SenseGuard products that are, I think Catherine just mentioned uh, uh, about that as well. So that means is a connectivity, right? So you have the application that you can do all that. On kitchen products, we do have our applications as well into the kitchen product. So it's always like working as a support of our hardware. You always always have like a software like that can bring these things together that you know have either informations or either have functions that you could not kind of perform only into the product. Uh, I definitely uh, can guarantee that this is like always been considered by 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 the team. We we, we see that uh, more and more we can I think make a bridge between the, the two worlds between let's say the physical world and and the digital world. And I think this is what we're doing here today is a great example of how digital technologies that were there with a relevance right you know is trying to connect different parts of the world that we don't need to 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 be there you know in like it would be great if you could be meeting in the same room but uh, we cannot unfortunately and i think this is where where digital brings this bridge because there's a need and the technology actually supports it and um and this is what uh, we we definitely are doing with a uh, with the team studying and kind of bringing those bits together. But definitely, it it is it is in a transformation, and uh, digital technology is definitely here to support. Rino, would you like to add something here regarding the digital trend, uh, the, the the demand of the digital digitally connected uh, products of Goa uh, in the in the area in the region? I think we've always seen that in the region and. Uh... Actually, hospitality segment is always in forefront of all of these designs and elements. Most of our designers and architect partners and many of them who are on the call would agree that uh, they actually are the trendsetters because they absorb the technology the fastest and hospitality sector always consults designers and architects before they get into the trends or implementing an execution. So I would say that a lot of projects that has been executed in UAE, I mean, in Saudi Arabia and the most of Middle East, I mean, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, you would see that there is a very large part of uh, digital products which go in. 
and this region actually is it is in a way pioneer in terms of also setting up uh, the quotient on luxury products. So these are, you know, definitely the trends in the region and we've seen them for very long, much ahead than any other region. Yes, uh, Patrick, they, somebody also asked about the sensor type soap dispenser. They, they are asking if Grohe has any future plans to come up with the sensor type soap dispenser solutions. Yeah, from 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 uh, from product uh, strategies, and also of course, like that, like depends on each region. So, like uh, when you see like uh, where the demand is, we definitely can kind of a bring and can support into something. What I can tell you without bringing like a too much like too much details on development and stuff, and that say that this last year, uh, there's loads of uh, again like a, this 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 the, the three macro trends that we saw here are definitely are some guiding, uh, I would say, innovation principles that we use in design. And I think like when you talk about health and well-being and stuff like the whole hygiene aspect, uh, it's definitely kind of uh, into, into, uh, into our, our pipeline, into like a, our developing process. And, uh, and definitely have something like, a, you know, this either soap dispenser to have that into the bathroom or uh, also soap dispensers into the kitchen as well. Like uh, we've been studying like uh, where, where like uh, you can do in terms of if you break down the user journey within these products you have to understand. So where is the relevance here and there? Also where the relevance here potentially into, into projects, right? Uh, where uh, we could kind of, for example, make a bridge between the reduction of uh, let's say plastic bottles of toiletries into, into the hotels. Is there any need that potentially we could bring up into some new typologies of product that could kind of help uh, consumers and like uh, let's say hoteliers and like uh, into kind of uh, doing the saving and also the education on those on those points uh these are for sure uh points to be you know without giving details of new launches or, or something like that but just some sneak peek into where we've been uh we've been kind of discussing and trying to understand a couple of things here and there yes um Rinu, also there's a designer who is asking a question which can be maybe answered from the sales or marketing side uh, the question is like this saying if i'm a new customer how can you convince me to change my kitchen and bathroom equipment to the smart grow hair products? I think we have, we have a very big range which goes on from an entry level, you know, minimalistic to luxury. So definitely it covers a lot of lifestyle choices, but also a lot of price uh, choices in terms of how you want to design your budget. Being a leader in the industry also have an advantage of most installers in the region know how to install Groha products. So that's an advantage. We have widespread distribution network. So if you go to most of the products that you choose from our portfolio will be over the counter. So you don't have to wait and order and you know it comes in after a few months. All of this is very important because when you are trying to design your bathrooms or kitchen, you need the concealed like today and you would need probably the upper part six months later, you should have to deal with a partner which is able to stop this for you. I mean, these are practical issues of actually when you are trying to renovate or even buy something new, a new house never works on schedules. No renovations work on schedules, right? So we all know that. So we have to make sure that we, we go with a brand where you can trust with in terms of warranties, which are pretty high for, for, for the region, the cost, the design, the availability, and the installation. It's so important to have all this. And I think that's one of the reasons that most of our partners, uh, designers, architects, installers, planners do recommend the brand. And we have a fair higher market share in consumers, residential, uh, commercial properties, hospitality, hospitals, wherever, specifically in the region like Middle East. So I think uh, that really makes that um, as a case. But yeah, if somebody needs more convincing, I'll send my email ID. We can have a okay. chat. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Okay. And Catherine, uh, they are asking if, uh, how long have you lived in the UAE? And uh, what type of trends have you seen during your time in the UAE? If there were, maybe they are asking about the big, uh, big shifts in the trends, if you have seen. Catherine, question for you. Yes, uh, yes. 
Um, oh, that, that is a difficult one because uh, I've been here for almost 20 years. So there's been an awful lot of uh, changes that have happened over the past 20 years. Um, I think the main thing is that people have become much more aware of, of the environment, whether it's their home or the external uh, environment. Um, and I think people have also learned the importance of, of simplifying their lives and, and, and creating also while living here um, as expats to, to create homes and to create the most comfortable um, and the most hygienic um, homes and, and offices that, that they can. Um, I think there's the main changes when I first came to the Emirates, um, it was very much very, everything was very opulent and over the top. And now I think things are much more streamlined. People have looked to have more what's necessary um, for their comfortable lifestyle, um, rather than an abundance of, of extra things that they, they don't need. But I think people here are, are very practical and they also look for very smart solutions. So they're very much into you know, all the, all the different products we've been talking about today, digitalization, and, and, and the, the take up of, of new technology is very high here. So I think that's very positive and, um, and um, it's an ever evolving market, I think. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you, Catherine. I have one more last question and I think this is uh, for Patrick. Uh, it's uh, regarding the, te the technical challenges. It, they, they are asking what are the, the, what are the challenges that technical team face when it comes to executing the creative team and designer ideas, especially that sometimes designers are dreamers and visioner visioners. Sorry, I couldn't tell the word. Yeah, this is, this is an, 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 uh, I would say, uh, uh, it's a, a classic like battle between, yes. you know, like you're going to get R and D and design, you know, this is, will always be we, like the little friction between the, the two departments, right. Is a, and again, by the way, we, we, we deal and we interact with them every single day. Right. Is about, is it like a marriage, right? Like uh, you have to get along like uh, in a very good way. One pushes the other. And, uh, and we are, I must say, we are, we are fortunate at, 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 at grow up to have like, I would say like an amazing uh, engineering team. And, uh, and one thing I learned when uh, I used to work before joining Grua, I used to work like, again, for a Swedish company in a white goods, so like Electrolux. And uh, I, again, worked with R&D in uh, Brazil, in Italy as well, and, uh, and also Sweden. And uh, when I came to Germany to work for Grua, one thing I learned, if you are like, a, sometimes it takes a little longer for them to get, but once, you kind of pitch them the idea and the challenge, they, they get it right. They will say, okay, I'm going to do it. If they tell you I'm going to do it, they're going to do it. And then they will execute this superbly. And this is what you feel when you touch a, a grow a product, when you interact with, you say, wow. So yeah, so I get this. So I, I know that's why, again, design quality, technology and sustainability to have like the technology and the quality bringing together with design in a, in a, in a, in a, in a pillar but uh yeah you know examples as i just said like from what what they managed to play around with uh, <clears throat> with the smart control and, and make the technology in a great way so just recently uh we launched a, a couple of uh of, of new products and uh, and i think it's uh you know we had like a the, the the recent launch as you could see also the 3d printed faucets you know like uh, to kind of a play around with that technology and make something happen you know again how can and for us what we did if you take a look at the thin wall of the 3d printing faucet you map water is not going to run through that you know but they made it happen you know they definitely made it happen and the product works in a in a, in a very good way uh and we are we are definitely demanding as as, as a team so design we, we definitely push because in the other hand we are the interface uh with with you guys as a, as as architects and designers and the consumers you are the voice of consumers for us right you are our interaction with right? so we have to like learn uh the needs as designers we have to kind of find out the right solution and to bring the relevance of of all that and then 
then comes uh, like uh, you need to bridge that with R and D because we need to make it tangible and feasible. So this is where I think try to take what is intangible and make it happen is where uh, is where the challenge is. But uh, but but definitely challenges exist. But uh, I must say, as a company, we 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 are in a good shape to have uh, to being surrounded with a with a talent R and D team as well. Great to know. Yeah, so I think we are running out of time. So I need to wrap up and close the event. Thank you so much, Renu, Patrick, and Catherine. We really enjoyed your input and feedback. I also would like to thank everyone for taking the time and connecting to our digital design dialogue. I hope everybody enjoyed. Please feel free to contact us if you have any further questions or feel free to drop your comments. They are really highly appreciated. And also look out for more of these type of, these type of uh, design dialogues in the future since new sessions will be coming. Take care everyone and stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you everyone. Bye, thank you. Goodbye, thank you.